This is chapter five, part three. We are talking sanitation and sterilization. And this is a long one, but you have made it to the part where we are actually talking about the transmission of some of the most common viruses in permanent makeup and tattoo. So if you have made it this far, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, and leave a comment because you are here accelerating your permanent makeup career now. Hepatitis is one of the most common viral infections transmitted through bloodborne contact by infected needles. Hepatitis B is a serious liver infection that can be prevented by vaccine. Most of us have received well into childhood and another series of three injections while we were in junior high school. There are more than 200,000 cases of hepatitis B diagnosed in the United States each year and can also be spread by sexual contact as well as sharing needles during illicit drug use. Hepatitis B requires a medical diagnosis, but the symptoms include yellowing of the sclera of the eyes, abdominal pain, and dark urine. Hepatitis B becomes a chronic condition that can develop into a serious disease, including liver damage, liver failure, liver cancer, and even death. If you are a tattoo artist, it is in your best interest to be vaccinated against hepatitis B since it's a completely preventable disease and some states may require that you get it just to practice as a licensed artist. To prevent the spread of hepatitis B in your tattoo shop, make sure you're wiping all surfaces that may come into contact with blood with a hospital grade disinfectant and let it sit for the recommended dwell time specified by the manufacturer's label. Always wear gloves to protect yourself from invisible blood droplets and chemicals that you are cleaning with while using that hospital grade disinfectant. It goes without saying, but you must ensure that each client gets their own new sterile tattoo needle and that you never use on more than one client. There is a minute risk of hepatitis B transmission if you receive a needle stick during the procedure but we will discuss specifics of tattoo sticks a bit more after we understand the pathogens that we may encounter while tattooing. Hepatitis C is a liver infection caused by a virus that leads to severe liver inflammation. The virus is spread through contact with contaminated blood from either sharing needles or sexual contact. There are more than 200,000 cases in the United States diagnosed each year by medical professionals requiring a lab test. Most people have no symptoms of hepatitis C, while others may have fatigue, nausea, loss of appetite, and eventually yellowing of the sclera of the eyes and the skin. Hepatitis C can now be treated with antiviral medications and newer medications may assist in eradicating the virus in some individuals. To prevent the spread of hepatitis C in your tattoo shop, you must ensure that you are never reusing contaminated needles from another client and always wiping your surfaces before and after the treatment when making contact with open skin. Even if obvious blood and body fluid are not visible on the skin or the surface that you're working on, it must be cleaned to ensure safety. Pathogens can be spread through not only droplets in the air, but through minute cuts, openings along your fingers and fingernails, and then pass to the mucous membranes of your mouth, nose, and eyes by inadvertently touching them before washing your hands thoroughly. Understand that there are several portals and pathways that infection may enter the body, and it's important to understand that pathogens will be waiting there to greet you when you accidentally let them through the door. The bloodborne pathogen we all fear the most is usually the human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. HIV can eventually worsen to become AIDS. The acquired immunodeficiency syndrome can be deadly, whereas HIV can be managed for several years to allow the individual to live a mostly normal life. HIV damages the immune system and it interferes with the body's ability to fight infection and disease. HIV is spread through contact with infected blood or genital fluids. While there is no vaccine or cure for HIV or AIDS, there are several medications that can control the disease progression and reduce the amount of infection that is in an undetectable state. HIV is contracted by fewer than 200,000 individuals in the United States each year and is usually spread through sexual contact or the use of infected needles. 
Since the 1980s in the United States, all blood transfusion donations are screened to prevent the transmission of HIV and AIDS during medical treatment. Signs and symptoms of an HIV infection include swollen lymph nodes for more than three months, having three or more serious bacterial infections like pneumonia or meningitis within a year, fevers, sweats, lack of energy, weight loss, repeated oral and genital yeast infections, skin rashes, or flaking. To prevent the risk of infection of HIV or AIDS in your tattoo shop, never share tattoo needles between clients and always cleanse work surfaces with a hospital grade disinfectant for the proper dwell time. Be sure to always use gloves and wrap your tattoo machine and other work surfaces, including your trays, rinse bottles, and massage table with a waterproof barrier that will decrease the spread of infection. Regular hand hygiene for a minimum of 30 seconds with liquid soap and warm water will also help reduce the risk of pathogens being transferred from artist to client. What if you get stuck with a client's tattoo needle? While needle stick injuries are scary, they are far less serious in the tattoo setting than in the healthcare setting. Tattoo needles have a closed core, whereas hypodermic needles with injections and piercings have an open core. The open core of the injection and piercing needle allows a small amount of the client's blood or body fluid to be sucked up into the needle core and drop into your skin when that negative pressure is released during a needle stick injury. This type of needle stick injury with an open core needle has the potential to cause a more serious bloodborne pathogen infection only if the client has one of these very serious infections. Based on statistics, we know that there are fewer uninfected persons than infected persons, so the likelihood that you're tattooing an individual with one of these viral infections is slim, especially if you're doing a proper consent. The risk that you will contract a bloodborne pathogen from a tattoo needle stick injury is between 5 and 30% for hepatitis B. There's a 3 to 7% transmission for hepatitis C and a point. 01 to 0.4% risk of transmission of HIV, and it's dependent on the severity of the injury. Common tattoo infections in the Western world are generally unheard of due to strict bloodborne pathogen prevention protocols universally understood and followed. There is an increased risk of tattoo infection associated with tattoos received in poorer countries due to less stringent regulations and implementation of cross-contamination practices. It should go without saying that you should never attempt to tattoo or make contact with a client's skin during a procedure without gloves or without your tattoo machine properly wrapped with a barrier film. Why is there so much difference between contracting hepatitis B and C versus HIV? This is because the amount of time each virus must remain alive outside of the body while on a surface. The hepatitis B virus can survive on environmental surfaces for seven days in visible blood or body fluid or as invisible microscopic particles of dried blood present on shared items that may have not been properly sanitized or sterilized. The hepatitis C virus can survive outside of the body at room temperature on environmental surfaces for up to three weeks. In a liquid environment, the hepatitis C virus was still detectable for up to five months at a lower temperature. You must ensure that your pigment containers never become contaminated by touching the tip to your used pigment cups or having the container so close that a splash of ink back from the cup can contaminate your bottle tip. The HIV virus doesn't survive long outside of the body on surfaces, and it cannot reproduce once outside of the body. The HIV virus is not spread by air or water, which is why there's a lower risk of transmission of HIV virus than the hepatitis B or C virus. Now we're almost to the end of chapter five on sanitization and sterilization, but we still have a little bit more to go. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, and leave a comment on the most interesting fact that you found in this chapter. And thank you for being here for the PMU Entrepreneur Bible, where we are learning to accelerate your PMU career now.